Now, those were scenes from Nakba Day protests at Israeli universities the other day. Before I explain to you all about the lies and danger regarding Nakba Day, I want to once again emphasize how the whole fake cause called Palestine is the most dangerous anti-Semitic movement ever to exist in all of humanity. No one is talking about this. Not our political leaders, not our communal organizational leaders, and not our rabbinic leaders. No one. I think I'm one of the only people willing to state this very politically incorrect truth, explaining how this fake cause called Palestine is our modern day anti-Semitic, Jew-hating blood libel, motivating people all over the world to use acts of violence against Jews, including on US college campuses. In the name of Palestine, global leaders and journalists give a free pass to the growing amount of Jew-hating anti-Semitic attacks against Jews, all over the world, not just in Israel. So why am I telling you all that? Because I need your support. Tell Breach more and more Jews and people with these important videos and messages to help them. Do you know what a difference it makes to understand who your enemy is, who you're up against? No Jew can fight anti-Semitism. That's a boogeyman concept. But the second Jews internalize that the whole cause called Palestine is anti-Semitic in nature, then Jews all over the world and on college campuses will be able to understand what to stand up against in order to help themselves and their communities. So if you believe my voice of politically incorrect truth is important, then please just click on the donate button or on the campaign link that we are writing right now and you can use the link below. So what is the Nakba and what is Nakba Day? Well, Nakba is Arabic for catastrophe. It is a marketing term they use to refer to the catastrophe, right, of Arab Muslims who lost their homes and became refugees as a result of the 1948 war. Nakba Day is the name of the day that they commemorate this catastrophe. Now that I shared their propaganda, let's delve into the truth. You know me, let's get to the facts, and here they are. Their Nakba catastrophe refers to a war in 1948 that the Arab Muslim countries launched to massacre all the Jews who were living in the land of Israel at the time and throw us all into the sea. But they failed. They lost that war and they failed to massacre all the Jews and throw us into the sea. Miraculously, with God's help, a ragtag army of Jews with no international support succeeded in defeating all the Arab Muslim armies that attacked us to massacre us and throw us into the sea. And that's why the day of Israel Independence Day, Yom Atzmut, is a religious day thanking God for the miracles of 1948. Now, as a result of that Arab Muslim war against us, some Arab Muslims lost their homes and became refugees. 74 years later, they still act like crybabies to the world, blaming the Jews for their failure to massacre us. So I say, happy Nakba Day. Let them continue to cry about failing to massacre us. Unfortunately, there are so many in the Western world who believe their Nakba narrative must be respected. But what is there to respect of them commemorating an event where they failed in massacring all the Jews? So 750,000 Arab Muslims lost their homes and became refugees because they failed to massacre us, and the world wants us to respect that narrative and destroy our own country and give them the land that they, didn't, they just tried to kill us. So honestly, anyone who respects the Nakba narrative is not just stupid, but evil, because it means they are giving credence to the Arab Muslim plan to massacre all the Jews in Israel back in 1948. So now that we sorted out all those facts, as an aside, let's touch upon another truth. There never was a people called Palestinians who took part in the 1948 war. There were plenty of Arab Muslims who lived in the British Mandate of Palestine pre-1948 who took part in the war effort with the Arab Muslim countries to massacre all the Jews, but none of them were called Palestinians because there was no Arab people called Palestinians. Jews who lived in the British Mandate of Palestine were called Palestinians with Palestine, British Mandate of Palestine passports. 
And the Jewish newspaper at the time was called the Palestine Post. The Jewish electric company at the time was called the Palestine Electric Company. The Jewish soccer team at the time was called the Palestine Soccer Team. Again, miraculously, the Arab Muslim world failed to massacre us in 1948. And unfortunately, today, instead of many United States Jews thanking God for saving us from annihilation in 1948, they prefer to be politically correct and respect the Nakba narrative that blames Jews for Arabs losing their homes in a self-created catastrophe because they're the ones that launched the war to destroy us. By the way, at the same time, 800,000 Jews from Arab Muslim countries became refugees as well, losing everything. But how often do you hear about the atrocities that the Arab Muslim countries did to their Jews back in the, the time of the 1948 war that then created the Jewish refugees? Now, while all those Jewish refugees from Arab Muslim countries became citizens of Israel, all the Arab Muslim refugees were never given citizenship by any of the Arab Muslim countries that they live in. And they still live in, live in refugee camps today, 74 years later, in Gaza, Judea and Samaria, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Jordan. You think the Arab world actually cares about them? Or are they being used as marketing props to bash Israel in anti-Israel media campaigns? Exactly. The truth matters, and the whole fake cause called Palestine is a Jew-hating lie. So happy Nakba Day, everyone. And now watch this video to see how an Israeli Arab who's proud about being an Israeli Arab, what he does with the Israeli flag, and then see what the Israeli university does to him. נתנו לה פקודה שאסור להיכנס עם דגל ישראל. זה מוזר. אני עכשיו הזמנתי פשוט את הצד שיבוא ויסביר לך למה. זה היה אחריות שלי. Jew student named Hamzi Saeed, he attends Ben Gurion University. He tried to bring in an Israeli flag into the university. It's an Israeli university. And he was forbidden to do so. Even though the day before, Arab Muslim students brought Palestinian flags to the university, and that was allowed to incite about killing Jews. This is our reality. Not only the evil we're up against from our enemies who still want to destroy us and use Nakba to convince the whole world that we're the bad guys, but look at what the university, academic and progressive world society in Israel, how they act towards us and even towards proud Israeli Arabs. These are our challenges. We will overcome. The Jewish people in Israel are waking up. It's only a matter of time. Hold the line. Hold your faith. Am Yisrael Chai. We're going to win this in the end. I'm just here to call out the reality that's being ignored by all of our leaders and all the media. It's going to be good, folks. Pulse of Israel. Frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.